بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد So brothers, uh, we're following on from yesterday's lesson and we've arrived to uh, the seventh lesson which is the seventh sitting uh, in the series of uh, in the series of lessons in this book, which is Majalis Ramadan, Majalis Shahr Ramadan, so the sittings in the month of Ramadan. And um, uh, we're just following on from where Brother Wasim left off, which was talking about the types and categories of people with regards to fasting. So looking at the um, the um, rulings, legislative rulings with regards to particular situations that people may encounter or fall into during Ramadan. So inshallah, it will be good for us to know these uh, so we can understand um, uh, and understand fasting better and the rulings regarding it as well, inshallah. <clears throat> so then the Shaykh uh, begins and he says, Al-Majlis Al-Sabi' fi ta'ifati min aqsam min nasi fi siyam. So we just mentioned that already. And then he begins and he says, Alhamdulillah al-Muta'ali an andadi al-Muqaddasi an al-Naqaisi wal-Addadi al-Munazzahi an al-Sahibi wal-Awladi رافع سب الشداد عالية بغير مادي ووادع الأرض للمهادي مثبتا بالراسيات الأطواد المتلع على سر القلوب ومكنون الفؤاد مقدر ما كان وما يكون من الظلال والرشاد في بحار, لط في بحار لطفه تجري مراكب العباد وفي ميدان حب في ميدان حبه تجول خيل الزحاد وعنده مبتغ الطالبين منتهى القصاد وبعينه ما يتحم وفي وبعينه ما يتحمل المتحملون من اجله في الاجتهاد يرى 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 دبيب النمل الاسود في السواد ويعلم ما توسوس به النفس في باطن الاعتقاد جاد على السائلين فزادهم من الزاد واعطى الكثير من العاملين المخلصين في المراد احمد حمدا يوفق على الاعداد واشكره على نعمه وكل ما شكر زاد واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك الرحيم بالعباد وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله المبعوث إلى المبعوث إلى جميع الخلق في كل البلاد صلى الله عليه وعلى صاحبه أبي بكر الذي بذل من نفسه من نفسه وماله وجاد وعلى عمر الذي بالغ في نصر الإسلام وأجاد وعلى عثمان الذي جهز جيش العسرة فيا فخره فيا فخره يوم يقوم الأشهاد وعلى علي المعروف بالشجاعة والجلاد وعلى جميع الآل والآل والأصحاب والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم التنادي وسلم تسليما. So then the Sheikh uh, as is his habit uh, opens with a, a beautiful opening as he's done with every single lesson so far and he says all prayers is and thanks are due to Allah alone, uh, the one who is high above all partners, the one who is free from any and every kind of deficiency and any rival, glorified from having uh, a partner, or for example, like a wife, a partner or children, the one who raised the seven heavens, uh, which stand without any pillar holding them, the one who made the earth as a carpet and stabilized it with firm mountains, the knower of the secrets of the hearts, and the one who decreed what has been and what will be of misguidance and guidance. It is in the ocean of his kindness, or in his vast kindness, 
that the boats of the slaves sail and it is in the realm of his, his generosity that the horses of the ascetics or the ones who are uh, seeking asceticism itinerate with him is the need of the needy and the goals of the aim whoever aims or tries to achieve those goals he sees with his eyes the striving of those who strive in his cause and he sees the creeping of the black ant in the darkness of the night and he knows the whisper of the heart within the depth of its creed or belief and he is generous to those who ask him and he gives them ample provisions he has given abundantly to those who strive who strive who are sincere in their intentions and then the Sheikh says, I praise him with a praise that is innumerable and I am grateful to him for his bounties upon me. Whenever he is thanked, he gives more. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone without a partner. And I also bear witness that to him belongs the sovereignty and he is the most merciful to, his slaves, to the slaves. Likewise, the Sheikh says, I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and his slave. He was sent to all the creatures and to every country. Peace be upon him, his companion Abu Bakr, the one who sacrificed uh, his soul and his wealth and was generous. Omar radiallahu anhu, uh, anhu, the one who supported the religion in an excellent uh, manner um, with his effort. And upon Uthman radiallahu anhu, the one who prepared the Muslim army with his wealth and at the time when the Muslims were facing financial difficulties, this indeed is enough of an honor for him on the day of judgment. And likewise, uh, upon Ali radiallahu anhu, the one who is known for his courage uh, and his braveness upon his family members, the rest of his companions and those who follow their footsteps until the day of judgment. So that's a beautiful opening, alhamdulillah. Uh, you know, and a lot of benefit just in, in the opening there, alhamdulillah. So let's continue. Um, so the Sheikh says, he says, Ikhwani. Uh, قدمنا الكلام عن خمسة أقسام من الناس في أحكام الصيام uh, ونتكلم في هذا المجلس um, عن طائفة أخرى من تلك الأقسام So then the Sheikh opens and he says Oh my brothers, as we discussed the uh, first five categories of uh, those types of people with regards to fasting and the rulings pertaining in those situations and uh, Brother Wasim uh, went through those lessons um, uh, he went through that lesson yesterday, so we're just carrying on. So uh, we reached the sixth category, and that is, and then the Sheikh says, فَالْقِسْمُ السَّادِسُ And he says, الْمُسَافِرُ إِذَا لَمْ يَقْسُدْ بِسَفَرِهِ أَتْحَيُّلَ عَلَى الْفِتْرِ فَإِنْ قَسَدَ ذَلِكَ فَالْفِتْرُ عَلَيْهِ حَرَامٌ وَصِيَامٌ وَاجِبٌ عَلَيْهِ حِينَ إِذْ فَإِذَا لَمْ يَقْسُدْ التَّحَيُّلَ فهو مخير بين الصيام والفطر سواء طالت مدة سفره أم قصرت وسواء كان سفره طارئا لغرد لغرد أم مستمرا كسائق الطائرات وسيارات الأجرة لأموم لأموم قوله تعالى ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فائدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسرى ولا يريد بكم الأسرى وفي الصحيحين عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال كنا نسافر مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فلم يعب الصائم على المفطر ولا المفطر على الصائم وفي صحيح مسلم عن أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه قال يرون أن من وجد قوة قوة فصام فإن ذلك حسن ويرون أن من وجد ضعفا فأفطر فأفطر فإن ذلك حسن وفي سنن أبي داود عن حمزة ابن عمر الأسلم أنه قال يا رسول الله إني صاحب ظهر أعالجه أسافر عليه و وأكريه وإنه ربما صادفني هذا الشهر يعني رمضان وأنا أجد القوة وأنا شاب فأجد بأن الصوم يا رسول الله أهون علي, علي من أن أؤخره فيكون دي دينا علي أفأصوم يا رسول الله أعظم لأجري أم أفطر قال أي ذلك شئت يا حمزة so that's a long paragraph, uh, so just bear with me uh, while we go through the translation. 
Um, so give me one second while we go through the translation of that. I'll just stay on here, inshallah. So the Sheikh says, he says, um, Dear brothers, in our last session, we mentioned five out of the ten categories of people pertaining to fasting during the month of Ramadan. And in this session, inshallah, he says, we will mention some of the remaining categories to finish uh, and conclude. Uh, but there will be another lesson uh, tomorrow which will complete the whole thing because there's quite a lot of uh, information. So then the Sheikh says, the sixth category, the traveler. So this is regarding the traveler. And he says, the one who is traveling is not for the purpose of breaking his fast. If he travels for the purpose of breaking his fast, then in this case it will be impermissible for him to break his fast and it will be obligatory on him to fast. However, if his traveling is for a valid reason, then in this case uh, he is given the choice of either fasting or breaking his fast, regardless of how long his journey takes and whether his journey is casual or continual. Such as a pilot, uh, you know, such as the pilots who fly planes and or taxi drivers, you know, for their job, you know, they're, they're always traveling. This is because of the generality of the statement of Allah, which we read, um, and we'll read the translation of. And whoever amongst you is sick or on a journey, then he should make up the days that he did not fast on other days. Allah desires ease for you and not hardship. And that's from Surah Al Baqarah. We mentioned Saya quite a few times so far. Surah Al Baqarah, verse 185. And another proof um, that's mentioned here is uh, mentioned in Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the narration of uh, Anas ibn Malik uh, radiallahu anhu who said, um, let's have a look, let's translate that, uh, who said that um, we were with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam on a journey in which some of us fasted and others did not. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not criticize those who were fasting because of their fasting and those who did not fast for not fasting. And in the narration of Muslim is narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu who said during traveling they used to consider it better to fast for those who had the ability to fast and they used to consider it better not to fast for those who were weak and were not able to fast during the travels. And that's collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And um, and also, uh, in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, it is reported on the, on the authority of Hamza ibn Amr al-Aslami, radiallahu anhu, that he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, so he was asking the Prophet, he was describing a situation to the Prophet, وسلم, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I am an owner of a ride that I treat and travel on constantly, and perhaps this month may come across me while I am on a journey, but I find it to be much easier on me to fast while traveling than to make up my fast. That is because I am young and I am strong. So would it be better for me to fast while traveling or to break my fast and make up the days I missed? Then the Prophet wasallam replied to, uh, to him. He said, he replied to me and he said, Oh Hamza, you can choose either one. Oh, no, uh, there's some footnotes here as well. It's graded to be weak by Al-Albani and Daif Abu Dawood. But in its chain are weak and unknown narrations. Um, but um, this is supported by some of the other narrations that, that are for, above which, which we read. Um, and we can kind of un understand and uh, extrapolate from there. Um, so you, we can see there um, uh, what the Sheikh has mentioned in terms of evidence for us. is quite clear um, uh, how we go about these situations. You know, Alhamdulillah. So let's carry on reading. So then uh, the Sheikh says, he says, فَإِذَا كَانَ صَاحِبُ سَيَّارَةِ الْأُجْرَةِ يَشُقُّ عَلَيْهِ الصَّوْمِ فِي رَمَضَانَ فِي صَفْرِ مَنْ مِنْ أَجْدِ الْحَرِّ مَثَلًا فَإِنَّهُ يُؤَخِرَهُ إِلَى وَقْتٍ يَبْرُدْ فِيهِ الْجَوْ وَيَتَسَيِّرُ فِيهِ الصِّيَامَ لَيْهِ وَالْأَفْضُلُ لِلْمُصَافِرِ وَالْأَفْضُلُ لِلْمُصَافِرِ لِلْمُصَافِرِ فِئْلُ الْأَسْهَرِ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الصِّيَامِ وَالْفِطْرِ فَإِن تَسَاوِيَ فَالصَّوْمُ أَفْضَلُ لِأَنَّهُ أَسْرَعُ فِي إِبْرَاءِ فِي إِبْرَاءِ ذِمَّتِهِ وَأَنْشَتْ لَهُ إِذَا صَامَ مَعَ النَّاسِ لِأَنَّهُ لِأَنَّهُ فِئْلُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ كَمَا فِي صَحِيحِ مُسْلِمٍ عَنْ أَبِي الدَّرْدَاءِ رضي الله عنه قال خرجنا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في رمضان في حر شديد حتى إن كان أحدنا 
لِيَذَعَ يَدَهُ عَلَى رَأْسِهِ مِنْ شِدَّةِ الْحَرْ وَمَا فِينَا صَائِمٌ إِلَّا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَعَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ رَوَاحَةَ وَأَفْتَرَ وَأُفْتَرَ أَوْ وَأَفْتَرَ أَفْوَنَ وَأَفْتَرَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مُرَآتٍ لِأَصْحَابِهِ حِينَ بَلَغَهُ أَنَّهُمْ شَقَّ عَلَيْهِمْ الصِّيَامُ فعن جابر رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خرج إلى مكة عام الفتح فصام حتى بلغ كراع الغميمة فصام الناس معه فقيل فقيل له إن الناس قد شق عليهم الصيام وإنهم ينظرون فيما فعلت فدعا بقدح من ماء بعد الأصر فشرب والناس ينظرون إليه رواه مسلم وفي حديث أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أتى على نهر من السماء والناس سيام في يوم في يوم صائف صائف مشات ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على بغلة له فقال أشربوا أيها الناس فأبوا فقال إني لست مثلكم إني أيسركم إني راكب فأبوا فثنى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فخذه فنزل فنزل فشرب وشرب الناس وما كان يريد ان يشرب صلى الله عليه يشرب صلى الله عليه وسلم رواه احمد so that's quite a long paragraph again so let's go through that inshallah so stay with me um, so then the shaykh continues and says if a taxi driver finds it difficult to fast during the month of ramadan due to intense heat for example he should break his fast and fast when the climate cools down when he finds it easy on him to fast. What is better though for the traveler is to choose what is easier on him between fasting and breaking his fast. If he finds it equal between fasting and breaking his fast, then in this case it's better for him to fast because that is quicker for him in discharging himself from his responsibility of fasting. Yep, uh, his uh, wajib and fard upon him. Also, he will find it easy to fast because he is fasting with the people. Likewise, this is the action of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did as it is narrated in Sahih Muslim from the narration of Abu Darda radiallahu anhu who said we went out on a journey with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in severe heat to the point that one of us would place his hand on his head to avoid the heat of the sun and this was in the month of Ramadan. None of us were fasting except the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abdullah bin Rawaha this is collected by Muslim. Likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu broke his fast on a journey when he saw that it was hard upon his companions to fast, as it is narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, who said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam traveled with his companions on the day of the, of, of the conquest of Mecca in Ramadan. When his companions saw him fasting, they also fasted until then, they, until when they arrived at a place called Qura al-Gameem. Uh, the people came and complained to him saying, Verily the people are facing hard time, a hard time with fasting and waiting to see what you will do. So the Prophet ﷺ asked, asked for a cup or a mug of water and drank it following the Asr prayer while the people were looking at him. That's collected by Muslim. Is also narrated or also reported on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu that he said, the Prophet ﷺ stood at a river from the rainfall while the people were fasting on an extremely hot day. They were walking and the Prophet ﷺ was riding on his mule. So the Prophet said to them, Drink, O people, but they refused to drink. So he said to them, My condition is different from yours. I am on a ride, but you are walking. My condition is easier than yours. But they still refused to drink. So the Prophet ﷺ got down from his mule and drank, and the people also drank, even though the Prophet ﷺ did not want to break his fast. So that's authentic, authenticated by uh, Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, in his book called Al-Silsila al-Sahiha. So then um, the Shaykh continues. So the Shaykh continues then. So let's carry on reading uh, from where we left off here in the Arabic, inshallah. So the Sheikh says, he says, وَإِذَا كَانَ الْمُسَافِرُ يَشُقُّ عَلَيْهِ الصَّوْمُ فَإِنَّهُ يُفْتِرُ وَلَا يَسُومُ فِي السَّفَرِ 
ففي حديث جابر في حديث جابر السابق السابق ان النبي صلى الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لما افطر حين شق الصوم على الناس قيل له ان بعد الناس قد صام فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اولئك الاوسات اولئك الاوسات رواه مسلم right so then let's break this down a bit more because they all paragraphed here now so i won't go uh, keep reading so you guys can keep up with me inshallah so then um the sheikh said he says therefore it if it is hard upon you to fast then you must break your fast because in the afar mentioned hadith of jabir radiyallahu anhu it was said to the prophet you know some people persist persisted to fast even though the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to them break your fast they continued and didn't want to but uh, um um Uh, fast after you have commanded them to break their fast so we can take it from there you know what happened here and and what one should do in, in a similar situation and then uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said they are the disobedient ones they are the disobedient ones because they weren't listening to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam up until he got off his camel i think it was a camel or his ride whichever ride it was and got off and onto the ground and drank and so then they obviously followed him in that uh So then the Sheikh continues and he says um it was all um he says he, he says wa fi sahihain an Jabir an aidan an an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana fi safar fa ra'a zihaman wa rajulan qad dhullila alayhi fa qala ma hadha qalu sa'im fa qala laysa min al-birr as-siyam fi safar wa idha safara as-sa'imu fi athna'i al-yawmi wa shaqqa alayhi ikmal sawmi jaza lahu al-fitr idha kharaja min baladihi bi anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sama wa sama an-nas ma hatta balagha qura' al-ghamim falamma balaghu anna an-nas qad shaqqa alayhi as-siyam aftar aftara wa aftara an-nas معه وقراء وقراء الغميم او نعم وقراء الغميم جبل اسود في طرف الحره ب يمتد يمتد الى الوادي المسمى بالغميم بين غصفان ومر الظهران so uh, let's uh, break that down as well inshallah So then the Sheikh he says and he says it is also narrated in the authentic books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the narration of Jabir uh, bin Abdullah as well again from the similar narrate same narrator that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was on a journey and he saw a man in the crowd shaded by the people they were shading him from the sun so he said what is the matter with this man and they said he is fasting then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fasting while traveling is not an action of obedience collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim So we can see there that is while traveling you know it's better not to fast uh, you know it's it's better not to fast um uh, and it's also following the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well so we get the reward for following him in that way <clears throat> so like, let's continue so then it says the sheikh says likewise If you begin your day traveling and then find it difficult to complete it you can break your fast as long as you left your city this is because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions fasted, fasted until when they arrived at qura al ghamim uh, that place was mentioned a few times in the hadith before he broke his fast and the people broke their fast as well and the sheikh says qura al ghamim is the name of a black mountain located at the sides of al hurra extending from there to the valleys of of ghamim between a place called usfan and uh, mariz zahran so then the sheikh continues and he says he says wa idha qadim al musafir ila baladihi fi nahar ramadan muftiran lam yusah sawmuhu dhalik al yawm li annahu kana muftiran fi awwal al nahar wa sawm al wajib la yasih illa min tulu al fajr ولكن هل يلزم هل هل يلزمه الامساك بقيه اليوم او هل يلزمه الامساك بقيه اليوم اختلف العلماء في ذلك فقال بعضهم يجب عليه ان يمسك بقيه اليوم احتراما للزمن ويجب عليه القضاء ايضا لعدم صحه صوم ذلك اليوم وهذا المشهور 
وهذا المشهور من مذهب أحمد رحمه الله وقال بعض العلماء لا يجب عليه أن يمسك بقية ذلك اليوم لأنه لا يستفيد من هذا الإمساك شيئا لوجوب القضاء عليه وحرمة الزمن قد زالت بفطره المباح له أول النهار ظاهرا وباطنا قال عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه من أكل أول أول النهار فليأكل آخره أي من حل له الأكل أول النهار بأذر حل له الأكل آخره وهذا مذهب مالك وشافي ورواية عن الإمام أحمد ولكن لا يؤلن أكله ولا ولا شربه لخفاء سبب الفطر فيساء به أظن أو يقتدى به. Right. So let's uh, let's finish this then and then we move on to the next category inshallah. So the Sheikh says if the traveler arrives at his hometown in the daylight of Ramadan without fasting then he has to make up the day because he did not begin his day fasting. The obligatory fasting is only considered valid if it begins from the rising of dawn as we know you know from, from the rising of dawn you know uh, from uh, when Fajr time starts. However we ask we ask it is obligatory on him to fast the rest of the day. So here's a question posed by the Sheikh. He says, so however, do we ask, is it obligatory on that person to fast for the rest of the day then? Then the Sheikh says, there are differences of opinions regarding this issue. Some of the scholars said, you know, it is a must on him to fast the rest of the day out of respect for the sacredness of the day and then make up the day later or for the sacredness of the time as well, the time period as in the month of Ramadan. This is the famous opinion of Al-Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, may Allah have mercy on him. While other scholars said, it is not obligatory upon him to fast the rest of the day because it is not going to benefit him since he has to make up the day anyway. So then the Sheikh says, the inviolability uh, of that day has already been violated in the beginning of the day openly and secretly. So it, then he quotes, he says, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud who said, whoever ate in the beginning of the day should eat at the end of the day. Meaning, Whoever it is permissible for him to eat in the begin uh, during the beginning of the day, so then likewise it's obli- uh, it's uh, it's um, permissible for him at the end of the day, and and this is the school of thought of uh, Malik a Shafi and another opinion of Ahmad, uh, may Allah have mercy upon them all. However, it is important to note that he should not eat or drink in public because the people may not know the reason why he is drinking or eating. And they will have a negative thought toward either they will have a negative to, uh, thought towards him, or and as a result, or as a result of that, other people may even imitate and start following him in doing that. So that's why the wisdom of um, uh, uh, if you're not fasting, that you don't eat and, and drink in front of the people, right? You keep it secret then, not to affect them in a negative way, as the sheikhs mentioned here. So uh, alhamdulillah, we've uh, reached the. Uh, uh, seventh uh, or the the seventh category. So let's start with that then. So the seventh category, and this is to do with the sick people. So we've covered now about the traveling people. People who are traveling. The the discussion about traveling. Now we move on to the person who's ill or sick. So uh, the sheikh says, al sabi the seventh category, al maridu ladi yurja bi bi. Uh, um, so the Sheikh says, he says the seventh category and he says the sick person whose sickness is hoped to be cured. For this individual there are three states. So this is a particular type of sick person that is going to will eventually inshallah be cured. So he says Ihdaha and la يَشُقَّ عَلَيْهِ الصَّوْمُ وَلَا يَضُرُّهُ فَيَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ الصَّوْمُ لِأَنَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ أُذْرٌ يُبِيحُ الْفِطْرَ So we'll, go, we'll take this step by step here. Yeah? So one, two, and three like that. So we can stay uh, uh, in focus, inshallah. So the first step it is, if he is able to fast without any difficulties or harm to him, then in this case it is obligatory on him to fast. That is because he does not have a valid excuse which allows him to break his fast. Pretty straightforward that, alhamdulillah. Then the Sheikh says, "Athaniyatu, an yashukka, an yashukka alayhi sawmu wa la yadurruhu, fa yuftiru li qawlihi ta'ala, wa man kana maridhan aw ala safarin fa iddatum min ayyamin ukhar. 
ويكره له الصوم مع المشقة لأنه خروج عن رخصة الله تعالى وتعذيب لنفسه وفي الحديث إن الله يحب أن تؤتى رخص رخصه كما يكرهه يكره أن تؤتى معصيته رواه أحمد وابن وابن حبان وابن خزيمة في صحيحيهما So then the second situation or state is if he is able, so if, if this particular person is able to fast but with some difficulties, without the fear of harm, of harming himself by fasting, then he should break his fast. This is based on Allah's statement. Um, uh, and whoever is sick or on a journey, then he should make up the days that he missed in the days other than the month of Ramadan. And it's disliked, it's makruh, it is disliked for, for this particular person to fast along uh, with the difficulty that he will face because by doing uh, this, by doing this, he is leaving the ease which Allah has given him instead, cho instead choosing to torture himself. Um, and so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll probably use a better word um, that Allah has given us a permission, you know, has given us permission, a rukhsa, yeah? A permission, uh, uh, an allowability here to not fast and make them up on a different day. And so then there's also a hadith mentioned here. Uh, the Prophet wasallam said that uh, Allah Azza wa Jal loves that his concessions should be taken just as he dislikes to be sinned against. So that's quite an important thing for us generally to understand that uh, when there's a concession, we should take it and it's in line uh, with the with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so you know we should be following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his footsteps. Other examples are like, for example, I just mentioned. We uh, won't go on for too long. We'll carry on with the lesson. But things like you know where uh, the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reading uh, eleven rakaat or twelve rakaat, uh, sorry, thir eleven or thirteen rakaat inside. And outside of Ramadan with regards to Qiyam al-Layl and Taraweeh, yeah? And then we have people who read, you know, more than that. And, you know, typically mosques around us, they will be praying 20. You know, there's not a problem with those sort of things. This is not a problem. Because the other hadith about reading Mathna, Mathna, about the hadith, is not a problem reading more than that. But what's better? I mean, usually, I mean, logically, I think all of us would agree here that logically speaking, what would be... Uh, better it would be that whoever follows the Prophet Sallallahu in his footsteps exactly. You know, for the people who read more than that, it's not a problem. They can do it. But what's better? Better is to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these are, there's different examples that come and people have these disputes about these things and um, uh, it's kind of baffling to be honest. Uh, but anyway, let's continue. So where were we? So that was a second type of person. So the third state or the third situation, should we say, uh, the Sheikh says, "Athalithatu an yadurrahu asomu fa yajibu alayhi alfitru, wala yajuzu lahu asomu li qawlihi taala, wala taqtulu anfusakum inna Allah kana bikum rahima, wa qawlihi wala tulku biaydikum ila ila tahluka, wali qawlihi wali qawli nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam inna li nafsika alayka haqqa, rawahu al-Bukhari. وَمِنْ حَقِّهَا أَنْ لَا تَضُرُّ لَا تَضُرُّهَا مَعَ وُجُودِ رُخْسَةِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَلِقَوْلِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لَا ضَرَرَ وَلَا ذِرَارَ أَخْرَجَهُ ابْنُ مَاجَ وَالْحَاكِمُ قَالَ النَّوَوِي وَلَهُ طُرُقٌ يُقَوِّي بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا So uh, let's just break that down. So Third, the third state, if fasting actually harms the person, then it is impermissible for him to fast based on Allah's statement. Do not kill yourselves. Verily, Allah is merciful towards you. And also, Allah, the most high statement, do not throw your hands into destruction. Don't throw yourselves into destruction. Uh, and also, because of the narration of the Prophet Wasallam, verily, your body has a right over you. You know, your body, your soul, your body and your soul, uh, they have, it has right, has a right. So from among the rights which your body has over you is that you should not harm yourself, but rather take Allah's legislative concessions 
This is based on the Prophet's statement. La dharara wa la dhirar. And it's a beautiful statement because there's only four words there, four, five or six words in total. But the meaning is vast. And uh, uh, the rough translation of that is, there's neither harm nor reciprocating harm. And that's the universal principle in our deen. Uh, we, we we don't harm ourselves, neither do we harm other people. Alhamdulillah. And that was collected by Ibn Majah. And uh, Shaykh al-Albani graded it to be authentic in Sahih Ibn Majah as well. And um, um, Imam al-Nawawi said that there's uh, different paths with regards to the chains of this hadith that strengthen uh, one strengthens the other, yeah. So um, uh, uh, that's a very important hadith, by the way. Um, so uh, let's continue then. Um, so the Sheikh says, وَإِذَا حَدَثَ لَهُ الْمَرَضُ فِي أَثْنَاءِ رَمَضَانَ وَهُوَ صَائِمٌ وَشَقَّ عَلَيْهِ إِتْمَامُهُ جَازَ لَهُ الْفِتْرُ لِوُجُودِ الْمُبِيحِ لِلْفِتْرِ وَإِذَا وَإِذَا بَرِئَ فِي نَهَارِ رَمَضَانَ وَهُوَ مُفْطِرٌ لَمْ يَصِحَّ أَنْ يَصُومَ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ لِأَنَّهُ كَانَ مُفْطِرًا فِي أَوَّلِ النَّهَارِ وَالصَّوْمُ الْوَاجِبُ لَا يَصِحُّ إِلَّا مِنْ طُلُوعِ الْفَجْرِ وَلَكِنْ هَلْ يَلْزَ هَلْ يَلْزَمُهُ أَنْ يُمْسِكَ بَقِيَّةَ أو بَقِيَّةَ يَوْمِهِ فِيهِ خِلَافٌ بين العلماء سبق ذكره في المسافر إذا قدم مفترا. So let's just complete that and then we'll finish off the lesson. We we finished almost now. Alhamdulillah. So uh, the Sheikh then says, you know, if a sick person is fasting Ramadan and then finds it difficult upon upon himself to complete his fast, you know, in this case it is permissible for him to break his fast due to the existence of an excuse. And if he broke his fast and then feels that he has the ability to fast the rest of the day, would his fast be considered? So that's the question we're asking now, the Sheikh is asking. So, you know, and if he broke his fast, so let's say if that particular person broke his fast because of that reason, and then feels that he actually has the ability to fast the rest of the day, would his fasting be considered valid? And the answer is no. The Sheikh says the answer is no. Why? He says because he broke his fast in the beginning of the day and the obligatory fast will not be considered valid except if it is commenced from the rising of the dawn. From Fajr onwards, as your brothers know. But is it obligatory upon him to fast the rest of the day? The scholars have differ uh, they've differed and they have differing opinions regarding this situation. And, and the Sheikh says that we've already discussed this uh, when we were talking about the traveller so whoever wants to go back and revise that, go back to that section of the lesson and have a look at what the rulings were and the discussions with regards to the differences between uh, uh, the uh, the different opinions between the scholars. And then um, the Sheikh also says, he says, وَإِذَا ثَبَّتْ بِالتَّيِّبْ أَنَّ صَوْمَ يَجْلِبُ المرضى أو يؤخ أو يؤخر برعه جاز له الفطر محافظة على صحته واتقاء للمرض فإن كان يرجى زوال هذا الخطر انتظر حتى يزول ثم يقضى ما أفطر وإن كان لا يرجى زواله فحكمه حكم so then, just to finish off here, the Sheikh says also, if, if, if the doctors affirm that fasting may harm this sick person based on medical opinion or may delay his treatment, in this case it is permissible for him to break his fast in order to preserve his health and avoid the delay of his treatment. And um, if there is hope, for his treatment, then he should wait until when he is treated. Then he can make up his fasts. But if his sickness is perpetual, like, you know, chronic diseases, you know, like uh, diabetes and other diseases that are out there, um, if it's a chronic disease, in this case, his condition is like the condition of the fifth category, which Buddha was seen discussed yesterday. So refer to that lesson with regards to the fifth category of the fasting people. He must ransom his duty with feeding a poor man or woman and uh, Wasim discussed that 
uh, uh, Brother Wasim discussed that yesterday. So if you're not aware of that, go back to yesterday's lesson, inshallah, and you'll see the discussion in full, inshallah, with regards to that. And then uh, the Sheikh uh, finishes here with a dua as he as he's customarily has done every lesson so far, and he says, "Allahumma wafiqna lil amali bima yurdiq." وَجَنِّبْنَا أَسْبَابَ سَخَتِكْ وَمَا سِيكْ وَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِوَالِدِينَا وَلِجَمِيلِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بِرَحْمَتِكْ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين And the rough translation of that is he said, uh, The Sheikh says, he, he does a dua, he makes dua, supplication, and he says, O oh Allah, grant us success towards doing things that please you and keep us away from things that lead to being disobedient to you and sinning against you and against your anger. Forgive us and our parents and all the Muslims with your mercy. For verily you are the most merciful. And may Allah shower his blessings on our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members and all his companions. Subhanakullahumma wa bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت واستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته that concludes our lesson for today inshallah we'll see you tomorrow around the same time بارك الله فيك for whoever missed the lesson or came part way through uh, please refer to the recording بارك الله فيكم